Everyone knows zero times anything is zero. Everyone also knows infinity times anything is infinity. So what should zero times infinity be? Zero? Infinity? Something else? By the end of this video, I promise you'll have an answer. Sometimes if we're having trouble computing things, we use functions computing values closer and closer to what we're actually interested in. This idea of approaching values is what we call limits, and it's something you're introduced to in calculus. A nice way to do that is to look at a product of functions where the first function approaches zero and the second function approaches infinity. When I say approach here, I'm just gonna say x gets bigger and bigger. As we plug in larger and larger values of x, this function approaches zero times infinity. However, we can compute this limit using calculus techniques or simply look at a graph of the function to see what's going on. If we don't mind the lack of rigor, take a look at this graph and see that it heads up and up forever. Thus, in this case, the function approaching zero times infinity is really approaching infinity. So, zero times infinity is infinity. Problem solved, right? Of course not. What about the function written in a different way? For the same reasons, this function, as we plug in larger and larger values for x, approaches zero times infinity. One over one plus x squared gets smaller and smaller towards zero, x grows out towards infinity, and so this is still approaching zero times infinity. Yet looking at the graph of this function as we plug in larger and larger values for x approaches zero. And so this time it looks like as we approach zero times infinity we're getting zero. Which is it? This apparent contradiction is why when you take calculus, zero times infinity is known as an indeterminate form. When we're talking about limits, zero times infinity could mean a variety of things. But approaching zero times infinity and using functions isn't actually computing the arithmetic operation zero times infinity. And while using limits can be quite helpful, they're not actually answering my original question, what is zero times infinity itself? I wanna know what zero times infinity is exactly, not what happens as I get closer and closer to it. And already we come to our next major problem, what exactly do you mean by zero times infinity? I mean, we know what zero is, it's a number. We know what multiplication is, it's an arithmetic operation. What's infinity? Well, that question probably deserves its own video, and there are certainly multiple interpretations and definitions for infinity, but for now, let's keep it simple and just settle on the fact that infinity is an idea. It's a concept of something without bound. In particular, infinity is not a number. And when we talk about arithmetic, multiplication in this case, we mean multiplying two numbers. And in this context, zero times infinity makes no sense. We are trying to multiply a number times an idea. We might as well say, what's triangle times circle? The question doesn't really make sense. And so traditionally, zero times infinity is left as undefined. But viewers of this channel know that I hate stopping there. To me, undefined has always felt a bit boring and unimaginative, so I think we can do a little bit better. Keep in mind here, when we make definitions, we're just making a choice, but it should hopefully be an educated one. Say we try to define triangle times circle to be square. Okay, sure, you can call it that, but it's not very intuitive and it's probably not useful. Plus, I'm not sure if most experts would agree with you. Enter wheel algebra, a fascinating topic that, with a few sacrifices, let you divide by zero and define things like zero times infinity. A previous video I made said that zero times infinity is the nullity element, which is like a super absorbing element, kind of like infinity, but more powerful. Anytime we interact with the nullity, it's the nullity. It's like this ultra absorber. Now that is just a choice we made, a definition. And with choices come consequences we lose some of our nice algebra rules when we try to define things like this. But if you're willing to make those sacrifices, you can have a working mathematical system that lets you define things like zero times infinity. And we can finally answer the question, what is zero times infinity? And like all great questions, the answer is, it depends, depends on the context. If we're talking about limits, zero times infinity is indeterminate. If we're talking about traditional arithmetic, 
zero times infinity is probably best left undefined. And if you're talking about wheel algebra, you can say zero times infinity is the nullity element. 